Yo, how's it going, guys? My name is Avery, and welcome to the channel, where we make and develop games. If you guys are new here, you already know the drill. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to get notified for your latest game dev news, and let's jump right into it. So today in this video, we're going to be making Brick Breaker. It's an old classic game, and we're going to be making it using C++ and SDL2. It's going to be a simple version for beginners. It's part of this new series, the Retro Remake series, where we're going to be making old games. In the last episode yesterday, we made Pong, and today we're doing this. So if you haven't already seen the last episode, go ahead and jump back and watch that. Watch the Pong video. And I'll go over all the basics. You learn how to set up SDL and SDL2 um, and its font. And this episode, we're going to be using a new font. If you don't want to, you can use whatever font you want. You can go ahead and check out the last video for the other font. But I'll have the font in the description. It was made by my friend. So that'll be in the description for what we're going to be using. And yeah, if so you have any questions leave in the comments below i'll have everything in the description for everything we do in the video if you guys are interested in the code also go ahead and ask me for it i'll probably set up a github page soon or something where i can post all the code but jumping right into our file we'll include the sdl's libraries that's going to be sdl2 slash sdl dot h and then also with the font library which would be sdl2 slash sdl ttf.h and once you get a reminder like I mentioned last time depending on how you installed it where you installed it the location might be a little bit different and then we'll include IO stream in case we want to print something to the screen or anything like that some sort of error um, I'm not gonna be covering all, all the basics because I explained a lot of things in the last video so some things I'll be jumping over for example we're gonna be using almost all the exact same paddle mechanics and ball mechanics that were used in the pong video so I'm not going to explain everything, but we're going to be creating our window. Let's define the window size and the width. We can set that to 620 and height. We'll set that to 720. You guys can go ahead and play around the sizes. You can do whatever you want and we'll make our main class. Let's do int main and depending on your compiler, maybe your main needs an argument or something like that. I'll just return zero and right here we'll create our actual window so to do that we'll have sdl window we'll call it window and sdl render so the render is the actual window and the render is what gets drawn and displayed on the screen as you guys know and also our font and we could be making an SDL color. We're gonna try using a couple of colors this time. And so instead of having all the variables for colors, this time we're just gonna hard code some of it in. And we'll also have a Boolean for running, just to let the game know that it's running, that it's turned on, so we can close it if need be. And we'll set up the exact same frame count that we had last time. Um, if you have any specific questions about any of this sort of stuff, go ahead and check out the last video. I broke down how some of these things work. And now in our main function, we'll initialize some of these variables. We'll check for any sort of error and we'll made up, make our for loop, our main game loop. So we're just going to check for error right here. We're initializing SDL. It's in it everything. And if this returns a negative number, that means there's an error. So we can say that it failed at init. failed at SDL in it as such whatever you want to print out to the screen just to advise the player or advise you where it messed up at and then we'll do the exact same thing for creating our window SDL create window and render and then we'll pass in the width pass in the height and zero once again this is the flag so you can set it the full screen there and we'll pass in our window we pass in the render and if that returned a negative number as well that means there was an error so we can print out saying that there was an error sdl out failed at sdl create window and render And now this time we're actually going to set a title to the window 
I don't think believe we did that last time. Do that, it's just SDL set window title. And then you pass in the window, and then you pass in the title. So I'm just gonna name it Brick Breaker. And as so. And now also we're gonna wanna load in our font. You can just do TTF in it. And just like that SEL in it, you can do the exact same thing up here to check for any sort of errors. Um, if it returns less than zero, that means it failed. And our font right here, we'll load in the file. TTF open and open font. And font for right now is just called TTF, but I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. I'll have a link for you guys to download it. It's possible the name might be a little bit different, or you can go ahead and download any font you want. You can look on your computer. If it ends with that, it should work. And we'll set running to one. Now in our game loop, we'll make it right here. So while running. And add some spaces right here, put that in the middle. So while running, we're gonna set up the frame stuff. Last frame equals SDL get ticks, which gets the current time. And then if this frame right here is greater than the last time, which we'll be setting soon, plus a thousand, which is one second, thousand milliseconds. Then we can tell that to change. Last time equals last frame. FPS equals frame count. And frame count equals zero. And after this, we're just going to start calling our main functions. We'll have our update, our input, and our render. And right after the for loop, we're going to call some of the things to close our fonts and our windows. So we can set this right here. TTF close font font and SDL destroy window and destroy render. So let's destroy that render first and then destroy the window. Then SDL quit. And I believe there may be a TTF quit. Let's try that right here, just to see. Now let's go ahead and create these right here. We'll make them right above the main. Set that to void. Set this one to void and set this one to void. We'll set up the input. That's gonna be the fastest one. We'll just check to see if the X was closed or if escape was pressed. And for the paddle controls, we'll just do left and right on the keyboard. So to do that, we're going to create an event and also an array of key states. The event we're just going to be using to check if the X was pressed on the window to close it. And we'll use the key states to check all the binary remote presses. So we'll just write here, SDL event E. And const uint8. And key states. And we'll just set that to get the key states. Pass in null. And now we'll check the event. So SDL pull event. Pass in a reference of E. And we're just checking for quit. The click in the X on the window. So type equals equals SDL quit. And we can set running to false. And now we can also check the key states. So key state, SDL scan code, escape, running will also equal to false. And now we'll do the exact same things for the left and right. Left, right. Okay. And right here, we're gonna have it to the Paddle spaces are going to move. So let's just do that right here. And then we can declare some of the stuff up there. So if we're moving left, then it's going to be going negative on the x axis. So dot x minus equals speed. And paddle 
dot x plus equal speed. And for you guys that don't remember, this is the zero on the y x coordinates right here. As it goes out, it gets positive in both directions. So positive y here, positive x here, and those positives are going to be here. Here's going to be the size of the width and the height. Up here is going to be zero zero. So now let's go ahead and clear speed. Let's just clear that right here. Find speed. And you guys can go ahead and play around with all the numbers, which means using speed is nine. And we're actually going to declare some other things. We never declared our font size. So we declare the font size, set that to 32. And also to clear size that we're using for the ball, like we did in the last video with Pong. And we're also going to have rows and columns. So let's just set that to 13 rows. Or let's set 13 columns and 13 rows. So you guys can go ahead and play around with these numbers. You can make it so there's more bricks or less bricks in the game. And the way that we're going to be setting up our algorithm to calculate where the bricks should go, it's going to also depend on the numbers. So some numbers aren't going to work completely correctly, but most will. But if the numbers are going to be the exact same, you say you have 2-2, two, two, it might split out something a little bit different than you were expecting. And we're also going to define pi, um, just to make it simple. Let's do that right there. You guys can go ahead and add a lot more things and make it a more detailed, more specific pi. And we'll also do spacing. Spacing is going to be the space in between each brick. And this right here should be enough. Now let's create some of our objects here. SDL rect. For you guys that don't remember, SDL rect is just an XY coordinate with the width and a height, as we were doing with the paddle before. And while the ball, or the lives, the lives will just be like what we did at the scoreboard last time, it's where the live counter is going to be written onto, and it'll do brick. Um, some ways that some people do this, most of the time, they'll have an array or they have a vector of the bricks, and they'll just redraw everything. For example, we're just going to have an array of booleans saying if the brick is there or not, and then we'll just recalculate this exact same brick just over and over against on the screen for drawing and for doing collision. Or the velocity for the ball. Velocity y and velocity of x. Then we'll have our live count, which will display on the STL rect of lives. And we'll just make it so it starts out at three, and every time it hits the bottom of the screen without hitting your paddle, it'll just go down once. And if it goes down to zero, it'll just reset it all. We'll do bull bricks. Row times column. So if you guys were doing it so there's levels or there's changing of the row and column size during the game, this isn't going to work with this because you can't change the size of an array through it. But if you guys are having a change, you guys can use a vector instead and change some of the code for that. And now jumping back into the main before our game loop, we're going to declare some of the things. We're going to size up the ball and the bricks and whatnot. So to do that, um, we also need to declare int last time. So int last time equals zero. And right here, we can say paddle dot height, set that to 22, paddle dot width, and we'll just make it a quarter of the screen. Oh. Quarter of the width of the screen. And then, actually, I'm going to set that to 12. And then ball dot width and ball dot height. Set that to size. And then paddle dot y. Actually, we'll declare that in a second. We'll set up our brick. Brick dot width equals. So we'll do width minus spacing and times that by the column and divide that by how many columns there are. So basically what this is you're going to do, figure out based on how many columns there are in the window, it's going to fit that into the screen 
also including the spacing. So that's just going to make it so all the bricks can fit into the screen with the correct spacing. And then brick height, just set that to 22. And now in the Pong game, we had a serve function. And this one, we'll just have a reset brick function. So reset bricks. And that's where we're going to declare all the specific things and show where everything needs to be. And we'll go ahead and do that right up here. So void reset bricks. So in here we're just going to want to loop through the bricks. So int i equals zero. And then let's do it like this. Plus plus. And then we can just set them all to positive. So no display them. And we'll can set our lives to three. And we'll set the paddle to position. Fit in the middle of the screen. Do that'll be width divided by two minus paddle dot width divided by two. That'll fit it into the middle of the screen. And we'll set the ball's location as well for when it starts off. We'll base that off of where the paddle is. Let's have it start a little bit above it. As you can remember, negative. It's going to make it go up. So the paddle's on here. Negative is going to make it go up a little bit. And then we'll set our velocity. Velocity y. We'll just do that. The ball speed. Divided by 2. So it'll just start off at half speed at the very first serve. But afterwards it goes up a little bit. And velocity x is 0. And ball that x equals width. Divided by 2. Size divided by 2. And we'll set, we don't need to recall it every time here. So back here in the main, we're going to set the paddles Y. So you just do paddle.y. And let's set that to height minus paddle.height minus 32. That's just going to leave a small gap between it and the bottom of the screen. And now in our draw function, the render. We're going to finish up our frame count and we're going to draw the background, set some of the colors and draw everything onto the screen. So first thing for the background, we'll do set render draw color and we'll just make the window have a black background, pass in the render and then pass in the color. Once again, you can use out of 255, 255 or you can give it a hex number. And then you just clear the screen, and that's going to clear it with the last color. Surrender. So that's going to clear the screen to make it all black. Now let's finish up the frame. The frame count goes up once every time it draws. Still get ticks. This is the last frame. Along with if timer FPS is greater than 1000 divided by 60 so it's going to be every 60 frames a second it'll delay it just a little bit using SDL delay divide that by 60 and minus timer FPS and right here we'll actually draw things and we'll push it all to the screen so to push it to the screen we'll just do SDL render present You pass in the renderer. And right here is where we draw everything. So we're going to want to draw our paddle. We're going to want to draw our ball. So we can set the colors for that. So SDO. Let's just copy this right here. And we're going to make those ones white. So let's just set that right here to white. And the bricks, we're going to have the bricks change colors. So we'll just do STL render frill rect to draw our paddle. Render and paddle. 
and we'll do the same thing for the ball. And that's gonna make it so the ball is gonna be displayed on the screen. And we'll also draw our score up there on the screen. So we can do right. And we'll create this right function in a second. It's gonna be the exact same that we used in the Pong tutorial. So SDL to string. And then lives count. And we'll give it width divided by two plus font size divided by two. Just trying to make it so it fits on the screen well in the middle. It's time set by 1.5. Now let's go ahead and actually create our write function. It's a simple function. You guys can reuse it in any of your programs because it's usable for everything. And we'll just say void write. It's going to be the exact same thing that we had in the last one. So if you guys watch the Pong tutorial, you guys can go ahead and just copy it. Except for we didn't set up our color. So you guys can set it up in SEL color or you can just manually put it in, put it in like we're about to do right now. And then SEL surface. And also we rechanged the name instead of having the scoreboard. It's just set to lives. And we create our texture. But other than that, it's going to be the exact same. So I'm not going to explain how it all works, but it basically just checks the font, it turns your string into a char, and it loads it into a surface, which is then converted into a texture, which is can then be used to be drawn onto the STL rect that we have set up. So right here is where we convert that surface into a texture. By passing in the render and passing in the surface. And now lives is the rect, which is gonna be drawing to. And we're gonna to wanna to do that for the height as well. And it'll free up some of the space. And we can also draw it. Render, copy, render, texture, null, and lives. And then it will destroy this texture that we just used. And we'll pass in the texture right there. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna set up some more things for the bricks and how they're displayed on the screen. So we can jump down here. And after drawing this, we'll just drop our bricks. So we're gonna loop through them. Same thing we had done before. By just doing phi is greater than column times row. This I plus plus. Then here we're gonna set our color. We're gonna actually make it so the colors can change. So if it's an even, it'll be one color. If it's odd, it's another color. So I can copy this again. And let's set one of them to be red. And then right here, we can say if I it's a remainder of two, or other words, if it's an odd, I believe, then we can change it. So we can set this one to green as such. So not all the bricks are in the exact same color. And now we wanna loop through them. So if the bricks is displayed, which means it's, if the Boolean is positive, then we'll draw it. And we're gonna be setting up a function to make it so we can know where the brick is, because we're gonna need it for the drawing and also for the checking collision. Instead of just doing it separately, we'll just create our function right here, calling set bricks. We'll pass in which brick needs to be set. And then we'll draw it. And the next thing we'll do is create this function for setting the brick. And we'll do that right under the reset brick. It's going to void set bricks. We're passing an integer. Call that one i. Now we need to do the math based on where the brick is to figure out where it's at. 
So since we're not using a double array, we don't have the exact coordinate for the X and Y location. And it's going to have to do some math to figure out where it should be. And that's why I mentioned the row and column, depending on if they're the same number, depending on what they are, it could cause them to be generated a little bit differently. And it's because of this. So if you guys wanted to, you can set it up to have a column and row separately. And that could fix some of the things, make it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and type this out and explain what it does right here in one second. So basically we're just figuring out, figuring out which row and which column each one of these bricks is in. And we're also going to use the spacing to figure out where it should be. And as such, so as you can see, we have the column. So it's going to figure out which column it's supposed to be on. It's going to have the spacing. It has this half a spacing at the beginning, so it can have a padding of half a spacing at the end and the beginning on both sides. And that's just to figure out where it's supposed to be. And we can copy this for the Y as well. We're going to want to change all these to rows. And this right here to Y. And because the scoreboard's at the top, we'll just move this down just a little bit. So just do brick.h times 3. That should be enough to move it down. And basically, this right here, this percentage, it figures out the remainder. So it says, how many times does I go into the column? How many times does it go into the row to figure out which row and column it's in? And it multiplies it by the spacing. And also does the same thing for the brick's width and the brick's height, as we need to change right here. And then it just sets this default spacing right here on both sides of it, just to have it a little bit more neat. And we're just going to use that, and that's going to display all the bricks on the screen. And now in our update function, we're actually going to set up the, the logic for the game, figure out the paddle movement, and figure out the ball movement. As we already know, in the input section, we actually made this so the paddle can move back and forth. We just need to make sure that the paddle isn't going out of the screen, and we also need to make sure check if the ball is hitting the paddle, and check if the ball is hitting the walls, and check it it's hitting the bricks. If we're hitting the bricks, we'll just do the same thing. We'll just loop through all the bricks and then we'll just do the set bricks and check the collision. That's what that function is for. And for hitting the paddle, we're going to use the exact same way that we had it set up in our Pong tutorial. So SDL has intersection. That means there is a collision. So that's just going to check it and we'll pass in the ball and pass in the paddle. And if you guys remember, we're basically just checking what position it hit the paddle at. And based off of that, we're going to calculate it to give it a 75 degree angle. So if it's further away, the closer to 75 degrees it is. Um, I'll have a link once again in the description that discussed how that works. So I'm just going to put this in right here. And if you guys have further questions, leave it in the comment section below. Check out the Pong tutorial where I discussed it further in detail. And we're going to normalize it because right here, just figuring out the distance. Now we're going to set the distance to be between negative one and one. And then we're actually going to figure out the angle that it needs to be bounced off at. Call that bounce. And set in our norm times and then we're going to set our 50 degree angle 75 degree angle sorry which is going to be 5 times pi divided by 12 that's what the pi was used for that we had set up there before and we're going to set val y and this is what's going to be a little bit differently than the pong because instead of it going back and forth on the x coordinates on the y coordinates we just need to double check for this so you can't just copy it directly over just make sure you change some of these, flip over some of the numbers. And then right here, you're going to have a negative sign. And this right here is going to be positive. So the ball should be able to bounce off the paddle. We also want the ball to bounce off the walls. So to do that, we can just do ball.y if it's greater or less than zero. Which means it's 
above the window. We need to just flip it backwards. We just, we just do val y equals negative val y. Just flipping that. And then if the ball dot y plus the size is greater or equal than the height, that means it's outside the window also. We want to flip that as well. And also when it's greater than the height, that means it hits the bottom of the window, which is where we're going to have to change the lives. So we can just do val y equals negative val y. It's flipping it. And then also set lives count minus minus. And further down, we're going to have to actually check to see if lives is equal to zero or less to reset the map. And then we can also check if it's touching on the left or right side of the wall. So to do that, it'll be ball x is greater is less than or equal than to zero or if ball x plus size is greater or equal than the width. That just means velocity x is equal to negative velocity x. And just a reminder, negative velocity x will just be a way to flip it. So it's just going to flip the ball right over. I mean, actually move the ball. Do that. We'll do this right here. Well, x. And then we'll do the same thing right here. This is going to update the ball based on the velocity. And we're also going to check this right here for the paddle not going off the screen. So that's less than zero. And then paddle.x equals zero. And then also to see if it's on the right side of the screen. So we'll do right there. And we can set this right here. Paddle.width is greater than the width. Now let's actually do the math for touching all the bricks. So let's loop in there again. So y is greater than column times row. It'll keep doing it until then. And let's actually set the brick. Set bricks i. So it's gonna have the location of the brick. And now we need to check for the collision. So if there has an intersection between the ball and the brick, and also if the brick is turned on. So if it's positive. And if there was a collision, we're going to go ahead and turn it off first off. So bricks zero, bricks i, sorry, equals to zero. And then we also want the ball to bounce around. So there's a few ways you can do this. We're just going to set up a, a, a basic way, checking on which side the ball is on. Um, it's not going to be super specific, but it's going to just check what side it's on. And based on what side, it's going to change the velocity of the x and the y. So we'll just do ball.x. If it's greater than brick.x, then we're going to have it velocity x equals velocity x times negative 1. Yeah, you can just set that to 1. So it flips it. Now move the ball just a little bit. As such. So the ball is just being shifted over a little bit. And we'll rearrange some of these right here to check if it's on the other side. And right here, we're going to add it instead of subtracting. And right here, we'll do the same thing. Oh, except these ones will be Y. And this is just a simple way to do it. There's better ways to check. You can actually add in the width to figure out exactly where it is from the ball. Um, that is make it so it flips around a little bit better but this is a pretty basic way and it works pretty well and now we're gonna have it checking to see if you were able to destroy all the bricks so to do that we'll just do bull reset equal to one and now we're just going to make it so if it doesn't need to reset then it's going to set it back to zero so if this one is positive so if there's any sort of positive at all to set it to zero so reset equals zero. 
and then right here if it's still negative the whole entire time or if it's still positive then we'll just reset the bricks and I believe this may be everything we're gonna go ahead and compile it and check it out so to compile it we'll just use this right here the same thing we did last time G plus plus brick C to B and then include the library for SDL2 and SCL2 TTF as you can see right here we have some er errors so we're gonna go ahead and check these all out so this right here needs to be changed to render live count was not declared I believe so we'll see live count Let's change right there. And we also want to check, I just remembered, fourth that's greater or less than zero to restart the whole entire match. So if live count is less or equal to zero, then reset bricks. And you could include that in the other if statement that we had below, but either way. And it looks like our ball speed is not declared. Set that right here, as we did in the Pong tutorial as well. And let's set that to 12. And let's check for any sort of other color. Actually, we need this color right here. So let's go ahead and set that for the font. So SDL color. Set that to color. And then we'll declare that in the main. To color dot red color dot green color dot blue and we'll set that all the 255 to make it a white so this right here actually typed it wrong that's a dex let's see the string and this right here is going to be the surface the surface equals ttf render text solid spelled that wrong this is spelled wrong here as well. So depending on what compiler, what ID and whatever you guys are using, um, you'll probably get errors beforehand. Showing things from misspelled, maybe you notice me doing it myself, which makes it a lot easier. So the reason that the live discord isn't being displayed correctly is because we're never actually setting it. So to do that, we'll just do this right here, minus lives.w. And then this is here as well so that's going to display it in the correct direction correct location in this right here we're actually putting the wrong spot because it need to be it doesn't need to be colliding it just needs to check if it's there this right here needs to be changed to an X let's go ahead and try this out So as you can see, we have a basic brick breaker game. Um, we'll just want to change some of the speeds and some of the things, make it so it can run a little bit faster and a little better. Uh, let's lower the ball speed just by a little bit. Set that to eight. As you can see, we can change these as well. Let's change that to seven. You can change that to five. Oh. And there it is, it changes the game. The ball speed can be changed. You can have it so the more bricks it hits, the speed can change over time. And also, I think the last thing that needs to be changed is this right here. It needs to be flipped. And that should make it run well. And if it were to touch down here three times, it's just going to reset it. And along with that, this also needs to be flipped. Let's go ahead and quickly check that. Pull up this new terminal. Pull it up. True. Break. Oh. Oh. That was my test. Build. And as you can see right here, we have our very own Brick Breaker clone. You guys can go ahead and play around with it. Change the row and column sizes. You can change the colors, change the speed. The ball is a little slow right now, 
I have a different example right here. Why is higher speed? There's more columns. And you can break all the bricks. Let's say it falls down there three times, it's gonna reset it. And it's just as easy as that. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comment section below. If you guys need any help with anything, leave it down there also. Remember once again to like the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps me make more content just like this. Click that subscribe button. Our goal for this month is to reach 500 subs by the end of the month. And as you can see, we're getting pretty close to doing that. So if you guys could help along with that, though, I would really appreciate it. And see you guys again next time. Bye.